we really dumped on Jimmy Garoppolo and placed the blame at his feet. But let's step back. It's a team game. They were up 23-7, and really the whole offense just went into, I don't know, a ditch. And it can't just be all – and maybe it's all the quarterback, but do you think – anyway, it seemed like we both saw some Super Bowl parallels. Shanahan bears a lot of responsibility for that Super Bowl. Did you see some of his tightness? I don't know if I saw his tightness, but I did feel a little bit of the uh, tightness from the 49ers offense. It felt like they just needed one drive to put the game away, and they couldn't piece together that one drive. It was just one thing would go wrong or one thing would go wrong. Which is the defense kept like, all right, here, you do it. You do it. Put the game away. And and, and, and that's the tightness I feel. I don't know if that's a reflection of Shanahan, or I don't know if it's Garoppolo getting tight in that moment, but there was definitely a tightness that you could discern. The one thing I would say, though, is that, and I, I think the one thing that became clear is that there's one player in this offense that feels none of that pressure, and that's Debo Samuel. And and what I really liked about Shanahan is that, you know, people have gotten on him, you specifically, and especially for not going to his best players, sometimes in critical moments, sometimes, you know, like he's the Super thinking Bowl. X's and O's instead yeah. of thinking players. Yeah. This game, every important third down they have whether you can whether they didn't actually convert either of them right the third and five they threw the shallow cross van resh made a great stop on Debo. Yes. rarely first guy brings Debo down second one was i don't even know how they were able to see the angle from the tv you know tony romo is drawing a slanted you know 84 degree line and saying that he's clearly one inch short skip bayless yeah. is tweeting that he's six inches yeah. short. I, I don't know what replays he had access to. I don't know how they did it, but it was that not. That was a great call. Though, again, third it was long. a great call, and he went to yeah. Debo Samuel with the with basically the oh, game on the yeah. line and the season on the line, which yeah. to me is a really good thing because to me, uh, they yeah. should be going he to Debo Samuel anytime long. the game's yeah. on the line. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, I was really impressed with that. To me, where he showed – a little, I mean, he has to bear some responsibility for not having any points after getting up 23. But I think, yeah, the fourth, the fourth downs were weird. And I was, I think we talked about it during the week like, what's the Dan Quinn effect going to be? And I think might have been that. I mean, Kyle's been so like he's a tendency, you know, when it's third and one, fourth and one, I do a quarterback sneak. And I think he was, he felt he needed to break tendency a little bit. Like he didn't do it on the, he kicked the field on the first, first one. And the second one, he like dressed it up in a way that the Niners hadn't shown yeah. yet. Which is fine, of course, do that, but it's also seemed like they weren't really good at executing it, or I don't know how many times they. Pre- anyway, it seemed to me that that would that's where I would point to. Uh, and honestly, honestly though, uh, his fourth down decision making, if you want to go there, it, it is bizarre. I, I'd yeah. love to hear his year, science right? behind why he goes for it when he goes for it and why he doesn't. Yeah. He always says it's because he's expecting a defense or he's expecting a look, and it's a vague answer that kind of just yeah. gets him out of it, but. It's no, oh, I'm embracing the analytical decision like a John Harbaugh who says we're going to go for it if it's analytically the correct decision, which right. the analytics almost thing, always need to says, point right? to He says it's a gut thing. And yeah. sometimes the gut in terms of where they are in the football game, like it, it's it's a little bit scary at times because, you know, a good offense like Dallas, it didn't happen yesterday. But no matter how good your defense is playing and how much they're stopping them, you don't know if they can just get off that one drive. They can just have that one drive. And so sometimes it's shocking to me that, you know, he doesn't trust. He's got Debo Samuel. He's got George Kittle. He sometimes doesn't trust them to get that one yard, and he punts the ball back. It, 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 it'll it be interesting to see moving forward because I, I, I don't know what. In this game, though, like, are there, I don't think I have my thing here, but there was like he, – he, like he, he kicked one. early in the game, yeah. He had like a third and one where he called – I don't have it here. He called a pass. It was like, what – I just felt he was a little off in his play calling. And I guess comparing him to D'Amico, who we're going to talk about in a minute, uh, it was a stark difference. Like Kyle's kind of – he had great moments, but he sort of like was – had to find it. And D'Amico was in the zone the whole way. So I was just kind of – it's like, damn, dude, Kyle. This guy's been doing it for three months, man. He's showing you up. Anyway, Kyle, Uh, that that call on third and ten at the end was great. If you want to go there, I do think there's a difference uh, between Shanahan and D'Amico Ryans and D'Amico Ryans and Robert Sala. And I, I, if you want to go right there, I, Hold I, I on. think we got to answer some questions yet. So let's okay. Let, that's a tease. We're, 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 we're teasing that. 